Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's Elliot Brown here in the Essex Business Radio studio where I'm chatting to people absolutely everywhere and I'm hitting my mic uh, when I'm chatting to people absolutely everywhere about how they're dealing with COVID-19, Corona, whatever we want to call it, Co-19 as I heard today, uh, how they're pivoting and changing themselves and their business and any ideas, tips and advice they've got for you guys out there uh, for how you can deal with it and make the most of this challenging situation. So today, joining me, a very, very good friend of mine, um, is uh, Anthony Komodikis from House of Thrix in London. Um, how you doing, Anthony? Hey, we're all good, man. Thank you so much for having us on. No, mate, I'm, uh, it's, my, it's my absolute pleasure. Um, and, uh, and you've got all dressed up for me, mate. I mean, you do look, you always look suave. You always look sophisticated. Um, <laughs> you don't, do you really dress like this usually if you're not coming on to do a, do a, do a recording? <laughs> That, that, that's a secret we, we do it in the part two video <laughs> we'll talk about it later <laughs> what i usually wear at home <laughs> <laughs> yeah we won't talk about that right now um so but no I, and anthony i've known for my god how, how, long, how long have i known you for 10 years yeah yeah, uh, yeah, easy. Ten years, yeah. Yeah, tell yeah. You. and and I'm and, and oh. one of the few one of the few people that I trusted to cut my hair for a very very long time yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I, I mean, if if you know, I take it as a privilege. The fact that you had me around for that long doing your hair that was a big privilege. If uh, if anyone does hair out there watching this video, this guy he knows what he wants and he doesn't know what he doesn't want, and you have to be on your game with him. And he he's got to be good. It's got to be good. Otherwise, he'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> i've taken that as a compliment actually <laughs> i'm the same i'm the same hey, hey, listen, yeah yeah and, and you and you're and you're particularly good mate i mean you know you're you're, you're the best hairdresser i've ever had for sure and uh, and, I, and, I, and there'll be a hell of a lot of people that will say exactly the same so much so that you you know you aren't you don't just work for somebody you have your own your own business now your own salon which you've had for a little while uh, so tell us tell us a bit about house of Thrix, anthony so, uh, yeah, House of Thrix, actually, believe it or not, it's only been going on for around, inaugurated around six months ago. So it's, it's still a baby. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I don't know if you're going to get into that later, but what that felt like when we had to shut down, when, uh, when obviously COVID-19 started and the lockdown. Of course. Happened, I mean, that was, it was a different story. I mean, that's just a different level of emotion that we felt. But um, it's only been going for around six months. I was working for a big brand before that in the barbering industry, men's grooming industry, actually. I was touring a bit i was doing a lot of work in the states yeah doing work uh, for people in, uh, in dubai a little bit on that just before i left and a lot of educational stuff i was doing i was doing a lot to be honest um different stuff i like to keep busy a bit like you i don't just like one thing i gotta keep busy on everything yeah um and then the opportunity came up um for, for the shop and i was like well it was in a location actually in london where i thought i I couldn't get another opportunity like this to get a shop like this again. It's so expensive there. I mean, the rent, the rates in the city is just ridiculous. Where, where, where are um, you? Tell, tell, us where, tell us where you are. I mean, you're in a great spot. Yeah, we're, we're a stone's throw from uh, Liverpool Street inside the Hackett shop. Yeah. Uh, so we're literally right next to one of the busiest stations in the UK. Yeah. Um, it, it is really, really cool. Really good clients there. They're like friends of ours as well down there. They're excellent. Um, so yeah, the opportunity for that came up and I was like, yes, finally, like, let's do it. Let's really do it. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Uh, everything that can go wrong did go wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, uh, it was like fun, awful days, but I tell you what, um, and, and also like when you first open as well, like you're doing that original period where you're, you're building the business again Yeah. and you, you're struggling to find clients, don't have enough. You don't even know yet. You don't really know your bottom line and your balance sheet isn't that clear yet yeah so you don't know like what's going on and you're just concerned um but i tell you what helped i i, I remember when i i launched the shop for the company i was working for before yeah and in the beginning part i mean i put my neck on the line as well for the shop you uh, did and in the beginning part, yeah it was really contentious someone else wanted to open the shop uh, and run it uh, i wanted it um so i gave that's right that's right i remember yeah i remember yeah yeah I gave, I gave, I did a bit of background work that I knew that the other guy wouldn't do, and I gave like a plan. Um, so when they said to me, "Well, you know, we're going to consider you. We, we want to see you comes up with the best plan first. and I was just like, "Well, actually, I've already done one. Here yeah. you go. Yeah, I've got all this information, and they're like, uh, "Okay, we kind of have to give it to you now." So um, I remember we opened that, and I was like, "This better work," because <laughs> yeah. I just made myself look like I know it all, and now I've got to do it. <laughs> We, we, opened, we opened the shop and it was really quiet. <laughs> and um, I remember that period when we were building it, um, yeah. it was 
it was it was fun as well, like because there was always the challenge and we were running around. Um, the team was really close because yeah. we were all trying to help each other and trying to get busy. And the guys were really responsive to whatever I was asking them. And it was, it was, a, it was, it was a fun time. The fun part is always the beginning part, really. And yeah. then it got really busy. And when it got really busy, um, thankfully, we, it was just like the, de- the day was the same every day. You go in, you're very busy doing your clients, which is great, which is what you want. Yeah. But there's no more different challenges anymore. No, of course. So when I opened house, of, yeah. So when I opened house of three, I was like, and it was the beginning part. I kept saying to myself, I got to remember that the fun part last time. It was the beginning. And when that was all over with, and when we got to where we wanted to be, it's over. Like the, that fun part in that sense is over. So enjoy yeah. the hard part now. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun yeah. getting it busy. Yeah. And then six months, six, six months in, the, the massive spanner gets, gets, gets thrown in the works. Um, and, but, You've only, you've only recently been through it. In fact, you built a business for somebody else, in essence, really, you know, prior to, to, to having, you know, this, you know, this shop now. Uh, so <clears throat> being able to pivot and change with what you're doing um, isn't foreign to you, is it, you know? No. no. So well, you, like so, I said, I, go on. Go, sorry. No, so, you know, so, so you, you, it, it's, it's, is it, I mean, you're looking at new things already, right? You're looking at you know, things that you can't, I mean, you know, as we spoke before, before we started recording, <laughs> you're not going, uh, going to work. You can't cut hair, you know, and, uh, and, and all barbers are basically ceased, ceased trading for the time being. As I said before we started recording, unless you're a dentist, you're not going to get a lot closer to somebody, are you? You know, really. <laughs> um, so, um, so you, but you're already doing new things. You're already looking at, at ways you can get yourself out there, right? Yeah, like I said, like you, man, I've got to do a million things all the time. And actually, I, I hate it, like working under pressure, but I know that I have to. When you I want to get thrive on it, really. Yeah, I have to be under pressure. I thrive on it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm almost certain people like you're the same. I think you do this, right? I reckon you create scenarios where you are under so much pressure so you can thrive in it. And then yeah. that's how you end up doing it. Kind of yeah. thing. It's, all, it's awful. We do it to ourselves. So um, I started, um, I, I mean, I wasn't going to sit around. We shut the shop. Um, it was really emotional. Even like my, one of my barbers, I mean, he was really emotional about it too. Because we, did, we didn't think, are we going to close forever necessarily? But you just don't know, do you? No, well, at that stage, nobody knew what was, what was happening at all, did we? It was literally like close. I mean, look back now, of course, you know, with the life has continued in a particular way. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, and after trying to open a shop for like 17 years and finally opening one. And then you're like, this could go. I don't know what do I'm going to get on my rent. I don't know how it's going to work. I can't afford to just pay rent on a shop in the city, you know, for a few months and not have any trade. So yeah, of course. it was really scary. I went home and I thought, right, the first thing I did, um, the, the, the government obviously announced what they were doing for businesses. And they had the, apart from the fellow scheme, they had the, the, the loan scheme, and the interruption loan scheme and the grant for small businesses. Yeah. Now we didn't qualify for the business grants. So, and it was like, um, it was like a crack that we fell through. Actually, it was a bit, I, I felt like it was out of order. They kind of missed us out and many businesses like mine. Mm, oh yeah, for sure. Completely. We're a concession business. So we're not the main registrar for the business rates. So there's nothing we can do about it. It is what it is. I was messaging the council cause it was all through the local authority anyway, and they want, too helpful to be honest so i was all day spending my time emailing and lobbying mps um the business federation anyone i could get to basically make noise yeah and actually quite i mean it's not the end yet but uh actually what we did manage to do was we got two mps um actually from the elected government to write into the treasury to write into directly to rishi sanak as well in an official letter yeah yeah and obviously bringing up the points about all the businesses that are suffering that aren't getting the, aren't eligible to get the grants that they kind of should have done. They've been overlooked. Yeah. Um, so that was, I mean, that took up a lot of time, but I was, I was on got, it. I was messaging. And you got a petition, right? Which you've made me, made me you know, sign digitally as well, which is a great uh, thing. I mean, I think, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great, did, did you, was that you single handedly getting that petition sort no. of? No, <clears throat> no, no, it wasn't me though. Uh, you could have taken, I, full, I you, think... could, you could have taken full glory then. I'd have gone, Oh, I was really impressed. Anthony. <laughs> I know, I know. But you know what? You know, as I was, it didn't, it didn't have a lot of traction in the beginning. And literally a lot of the earlier part, I think at least a good couple hundred signatures were me to get it started. I think. Right. Because I was, I was, I was three o'clock in the morning, I think. 
and I saw this petition and it had hardly any people on it. So I started spamming people that were online on Twitter, people that I knew. And I was going back to the site constantly watching one, two, three. W- were you, build. right? And I thought, you know, it's just momentum, right? Get a few more people because you want to at least reach 10,000 and then you get a response. Yes. But um, everyone was like, yeah, there's nothing you can do. But to be honest, I even got a journalist from the Daily Mail, a political correspondent, to message into the Treasury too. Right. Uh, to raise the point. So I mean, we've got, we, got, we, did, we got a lot done, to be honest. And um, yeah, I wasn't just going to sit around and accept the no. So uh, we're still trying to get that. But apart from that, looking at different ways of interacting with our clients, we launched a, um, a, it's called a pledge scheme, actually, where they buy kind of like a digital voucher. But they're not actually buying the voucher, they're pledging money to the business. Right. And in return, you're getting the voucher. Basically, it's like a safety net. So if the business didn't open, the open or whatever happened, they haven't bought a product that you're refunding, they've pledged money to you. Um, and your good clients kind of would do that as well. So a lot of our clients actually have been quite nice about it. They've sent money in and we've given them a voucher of the same value in return, which they're going to use when we reopen. And to be honest, we're going to reopen anyway. I can't, I can't see us not reopening. No, of course, of course, of course, you, of course you're going to reopen. They need you. But, you're, 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 you know, you're, you're a necessary service. Have you seen my hair? I need me. <laughs> <laughs> see my, see mine. Actually, I've got, I've got the lighting just right in here, so you just, so you can't, so it looks okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good tip. I never thought, I never thought of that. I I, um, yeah, I should have changed my lighting. Um, so yeah. <laughs> you still, you still look great, Anthony. So you always look sharp, my friend. Always. So thanks, darling. <laughs> so, 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 so videos and, and things like this, I mean, we, you know, you and I have uh, said it's, uh, it's, it's amazing how this time uh, to reflect and have a look at what you're doing and, uh, and, and be, be creative. You're a, hu- you're a hugely creative guy anyway, obviously, comes with the, uh, the territory. Um, but you've been doing videos and, and sort of podcast based stuff as well, haven't you, in your, in, in, in for your industry. So, so, t- so tell me a bit about that, Anthony. Yeah, at the moment, they're not as slick as yours, I've got to say. But, um, oh, really? So, you think this is slick? <laughs> <laughs> I, love it, I love it. Um, so, yeah, so we, we started this. Um, we started the new channel called Hot Talks because I was, we we're thinking of a name and House of Thrix, obviously, House of Thrix is H O T. So, I thought, okay, let's do Hot H. I like it. I like it. So, yeah, so we thought we'll do a series called Hot Talks. And what we'll do, we'll talk to people in our industry and um, get a bit of their journey and maybe inspire other people. Like you hear what they went through and you'll get a bit of motivation from it, inspiration, also actual knowledge on how to get stuff done and ideas and tools. So that's part of, that's kind of like the concept of it. Basically you watch the videos and you get some sort of inspiration um, and also knowledge to help people. Yeah. We did it for our industry, which is great. I'm looking obviously to start doing people who aren't also barbers and hairdressers, but we're starting with this for now. Yeah. Um, it, it was great. And to be honest, this is something it's been in the back burner for years. And yeah. I, if it wasn't for this scenario now, I wouldn't have done it. And I really wanted to do this. Like I love doing that kind of stuff and yeah. I really enjoy the channel. Yeah. So I, this is a great opportunity. I mean, I, 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 when I talk to people now, I really feel like I'm one of the few people when I'm talking to people, I'm like, I'm actually enjoying this time. I, I'm yeah. appreciating the time at the yeah. moment. Well, you, I, I mean, you, as, as you said before, we, you know, we both, we both keep ourselves busy. We're constantly sort of chasing our ass a little bit with things. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and so to have time to do what you're talking about, how would you have squeezed that into your, your daily, mm-hmm. your, your daily, you know, role with what you're, what you're doing on a daily basis? You'd struggle, wouldn't you? Um, oh. But, but now, you know, now you've done that, you'll, you'll make it a part of your, your structure of what you're going to be doing moving forward as well. Absolutely. You know what, that's going to be the tricky part because, it's all good and well now. How's this all going to happen when we get back to work, right? We've got to start thinking we'll, about We'll make uh, time. We'll, make, we'll have a chat. We'll have a chat about it. We'll make time. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I'm going to need you for that, actually. <laughs> um, I need some bit of uh, help and inspiration for that side of stuff. It, it's, it's hard because, like, like yourself, right, I'm, I'm busy all the time anyway. Like, before yeah. this happened, I'm always really busy, which is why I never did it in the first place. Not because I was lazy as such. Um, it's just something not, I, do, I feel like there's no time for it. So when we get back to the shop, I'm going to be busier than when I was when we closed. Oh, mate, you're going to be, you're going to be, it's going to be mentally busy. And imagine the amount of people that are going to suddenly, that you didn't, even clients you didn't even have before that are going to be on your doorstep, <clears throat> um, that were either going to see something you're doing or just, just sort of, you know, want to get ahead. It's got, you're going to have a whole influx of, of, of new clients, I, I think, to be fair. I think we might do, yeah. I, I reckon it's quite probable. And, but it's going to be very busy when we open it. And not just that. 
other than just doing clients, I think like in terms of where now that we've had time to brainstorm, we're going to want to do so much more for the business. Yeah. So we're going to be so busy on so many different fronts uh, when I get back into a shop because there's just so much that I've been thinking about and uh, stuff that we need to do better, really. Um, now I've had time to adjust, yeah. uh, look at stuff differently. It's been, it's been quite good, to be honest. Uh, Interesting. I've got my, I mean, you've got, you've got to stay strong in this time and it's going to really help you, I think, when you get out of it. I've got my own little rituals and routine that I do at home. I think that's, a ma- that's massive for me. That yeah. helps me to get everything done. It helps me mentally to stay in a good place, yeah. which I think is why I'm, I'm quite happy. But uh, yeah. you've, got, you've got to get that kind of routine and find a way for you to, to get into that creative space as well. Get creative is the number one tip for me, I think, at this time. Get creative. Oh. Oh, for, 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 for sure, you know, and there's, and, you know, there's lots of people that don't have time to be creative because, as I said, and we, we said a little while ago, you've, you've, you, you, there's, always, there's always an excuse not to do those creative things because you think other things are more important. But, you know, this creative time right now and, and, and making the most of that, utilizing, getting those ideas and either putting them down onto paper, even if you're not going to do them right now, you know, start planning something new, I think, is the, is the key thing to take from this because we are in a new world, mate. We are, this is, this is definitely a new normal. And, um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to be taken from this time and reflecting and looking at the stuff. Um, keep saying reflecting, but I think where a lot of people are reflecting as you, you, you are, you're looking at what you were doing in the business. What could you do better? What can you tweak? What can you make slightly better when you, when you start again? Because there is going to be a rush of stuff. I think, you know, I don't think we're necessarily going to just slip, slip back into some sort of normality. There's going to be a lot of work and then it's going to sort of level out. I think personally, I have no idea. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's, it's going to be weird. I think I'll tell you something else though, right? I think a lot of people anticipate in my industry that when they get back into the shops, they can be very busy, which is what we just said. But at the same time, you've got to remember that certain shops like mine that are in a financial type of district, this will be anywhere in the world. Um, yeah. When you go, when you reopen, all the offices aren't necessarily going to be back at work. That's a good They're point. They're not going to be there. That's a good point. Um, so your clients might not necessarily be around. So we may reopen. And this is what I'm trying to gauge at the moment and trying to plan for. We may reopen and it could be quiet for a few weeks until we start mm. getting people back into the area because mm. our clients don't live in the area. Uh, yeah. We're in the city. So yeah. most of them don't live there. It's a good point uh, where you are. Yeah. I mean, you've got, you've got, you know, footfall, but you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot, a lot of your, a lot of your clients are, uh, are businesses, are they local, local business people, aren't they? Or bankers or financial, financial in the financial district. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, just stand outside your door. Go back to old school. Go back to, I'm not being funny. Go back to old school. You stand there and tell people you're open, don't you? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff that people used to do. They used to sweep the front of the shops. I think it was like a Jewish tradition, like to help bringing good karma through the shop or something. Yeah. Um, so I guess we'll expect to come out of Liverpool room. Street and, uh, and, and, and see you sweeping the front step. Yeah. <laughs> you can see me with a broom in a few weeks. Just do one of those, one of those sandwiches. Go um, a sandwich board on and say, we are open and just, just, just sweep. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and you know what? Just. <laughs> You're going to laugh. You're going to like this. Before we, um, it, was, it was the week before we closed because we actually closed a little bit earlier, not much, but a little bit earlier before the lockdown happened. Yeah. And um, I would take credit for that to say I'm responsible, but it wasn't. It was because Hackett, obviously, we decided. Yes, yeah, yeah. Process, that we had to close, which was the, the right thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. So the week, the week and a half leading up to that, my goodness, like people from the offices were already working from home. And we had no trade, like it was dead. Oh, really? The bills were still there. The wait, yeah, it was awful. Um, it was one of the quietest periods I've seen. Wow. So it was worse than the first week of opening. <laughs> so <laughs> we, it, was, it was so quiet. Um, and we, we had the, me and the other barber just twiddling our thumbs thinking, where is it going? I was getting messages, to be fair, from clients just telling me, we're not going to be around for a while. We don't know when we're coming back. We're, we're already being told to work from home. Right. So my, uh, I was sitting down, I was talking to my wife as well, and was we saying, what should we do? She said, why don't you get one of those um, uh, boards where you can put letters on, it lights up, and you can write something, I don't know, like yeah. something, and put it in the window. I thought, you know, I, I, at first I said, nah, I can't bother those gimmicks. And then she said, uh, I'm going to get it for you anyway. So she got it, and then I opened it. I thought, you know what I'm going to do? Because <laughs> it was the last week before we shut. I yeah. put up on it something like um, half price haircuts for everyone. Come in today, and I put underneath. And yes, we are desperate 
<laughs> people, people like they, they don't want to be fooled. Like yeah. people like honesty. Do you know what I mean, I'm not trying to pretend. Like yeah. we don't have clients at the moment. I, yeah. I, I want to. You need the haircut. I'll yeah. do you a favor. We're, we're very, very expensive where we are as well in terms of um, the price in the area. So of course, I'm going to give you a half price haircut. Come in and we'll cut your hair. We did yeah. actually get a couple of people walk in from it. It was quite good. I bet you would. Of course you would. Of course you would. So it worked. She was right, wasn't she? Yeah, it was right. After the first haircut, I was like, all right, babe, that was a good point. Um, we got the money back for your sign on one haircut. <laughs> you, got, you got your money back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, is, uh, how, so, yeah. how has home life? How has she been coping with you sort of uh, there 24-7? You know what? We're, we're all right because she, she's working from home. She's actually doing a bit of work. And we kind of split the house. She's upstairs, I'm downstairs. I'm okay. working. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people doing that, yeah. Yeah, I know some of it. Yeah. We do mix a bit, but uh, sometimes she works down here, so I go upstairs as well. So. But for, for the norm is default. I come down, she goes to the office upstairs. And because uh, I don't really need an office as such, she does. Uh, and then, yeah, we start working. To be honest, I, I am really busy. So I'm not in the way of anything. I'm on top of like cleaning and cooking and doing stuff in the house that we're trying to get done as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really busy all day doing work. So. I mean, last night it was, you know, midnight. I'm in bed, still working. So. Yeah. There's always stuff to do, man. There's, I mean, always, there's always stuff to do. And listen, all these people that are sitting around, and I'm seeing loads of posts on Facebook that they're, you know, they're drinking more alcohol than they've, they've ever yeah. drunk. And, and, you know, and they're getting, I mean, I'm not being funny. Where the hell are they getting this? I haven't touched a drop of alcohol in the last four weeks. I literally haven't had a drink. But you know me, I don't drink at home unless I'm getting absolutely... <clears throat> yeah. Uh, obliterated and, a barbecue or a party anyway and then, so. <laughs> and then you go and then you go overdrive i know i know yeah mate it's either, it's either all or nothing it's either all or nothing but no i haven't had a drink and um yeah but there's a lot of people doing absolutely nothing right now which is which is mad but as i said in another I, podcast there's there's a place for everybody you know <laughs> not everybody has to be proactive and has to do things right now if they no. work for a company and they're a worker and that's what they do and they're furloughed well they're not going to do anything um, but there's, I think there's always something you could be doing or being creative for, for yourself, let alone in business anyway. Okay. Like I, I got a really good point on that. Actually. I think I'm not here to tell people obviously what to do. Everyone uh, is right for you. If it's right for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone's different. So my routine doesn't work for someone else and so forth. But I got to say, I think you really got to think right in this time, uh, I, I I'm exercising more than I've exercised before. Like yeah. in a long time because through injuries I've, I've stopped training a of while. course yeah because you're so a professional cases, dancer yeah. as well yeah and all the limbs and the joints have gone so <laughs> so now we're, we're getting back strong again so you know most days of the week we're exercising take advantage of that man come back stronger in that sense and that helps you mentally I don't care who you are if you're getting fit physically it always helps in some way mentally it yeah. does, man. so it changes you so I think exercise, you can exercise every day. If you're furloughed and you're not working, okay, great, don't work. It doesn't mean that you can't read, learn something, better what you're doing in your real job when you go back, learning yeah. something, a new skill. Maybe yeah. you want to go and open your own shop. Maybe you should be doing research. I don't know. Uh, yeah. There's loads of stuff you can be doing. And I think this is, for me, massive. I think what I do, I can take up so much of my time just by working on myself. So like I said, exercise, meditation, if you're religious, you can pray similar to meditation or whatever you like to do. Goal setting, add that to it. And it just changes you, man. That changed my life when I started doing that. There's so much you can be doing in that sense. And it just helps you get through it. Because I can only imagine, and I sympathize to some people out there, they're really suffering right now mentally. And I do feel feel for them, especially like if you're cooped up in a flat on the 18th floor. Yeah, 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 for sure, garden. for sure. Uh, uh, isolation is really isolation then, isn't it, you know? You're on your own. I mean, I, I can't imagine what that's like. So it's easy for me to say, obviously, what I'm doing. But that's why I said it's different for everyone. So you just yeah. find what's good for you. Yeah. But, but use well, that as a template. Yeah, well, I mean, I did a podcast with uh, with, a, with, a, with a lady in uh, in America, um, Sol Maria, and um, and she is in a an apartment block, uh, three kids, I one of them's that. got breathing. Yeah, she so and she's um, mm. literally she's in a, on an island. She's stuck in in this completely locked down, completely isolated, uh, deaf in a shop near her. So you know, because of COVID, it's there, and and those are there, and it genuinely touched me because you're right, you know we can crack on and do things because we've got, you know, we've got things to occupy our minds and things we can be creative with and not everybody's in that position. So yeah, of course there are, you know, everybody's, you know, being affected in a different way, but you're right. I think being fit and healthy and doing what you can, uh, I, 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 personal I, I, development. 
It, it really is. And I, I want to quickly add as well, I think it's really important to say some people look at people that are doing well in that aspect, like they look after themselves and whatever. I mean, to be honest, I'm not doing that well. I eat so much crap at home at the moment. It's only real. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to try yeah. and keep it off. Um, but yeah, no, people look at that and be like, oh, that's not me. I'm not that kind of a person. They, they're lucky they get to be that way. I'll, like, to be honest, I'm not. I hate waking up in the morning. I'm a massive sleeper. Uh, I don't do well in little sleep. Um, I get days, even now I'm seeing I'm so active and so busy. There's a few days I've had where I haven't done much at all. I haven't been proactive. I've wanted to be lazy. I haven't done much. I just felt like crap. And yeah. I've known you long enough. And I know well, you're, we I before, think you're before we start recording, I told you, I've had a couple of days where I've been, you know, but it's there've been dark days, down days. There've been, you know, you do, you do, you know, you sort of, you don't want to do a lot. And um, it's okay to feel like that, isn't it? Exactly. It doesn't mean we're all like, we all have that. So if you're going for it, it doesn't mean that you have to be that way or that you can't be any better or, or do other stuff to help yourself. Because if I didn't know you as well as I did, and I'm just looking at you, you're yeah. that kind of guy, you really are full on and you're yeah. doing a lot all the time. I'd be like, oh, that's just him. I can't do that. But I know you really well. And I know, I, I know without you telling me, you would have had a couple of days like that too, because we all do. We're human. Without, without a doubt, mate. And I'm happy to be happy to be upfront and straight about it. In fact, I spoke to you about it before, before or before we started recording, I'm going to be going over some of the things I've been through. And, and um, I know that you definitely, uh, you're definitely an advocate for, for me doing that. And, uh, and, and, and we're, we're in, you know, sort of, will push me to do that for sure. Um, there's a lot to be said from it. As you said, you know, we're both big personalities. We both get up, but it's, it's good for people to see not necessarily a vulnerable side, but a real side that, uh, that so everybody realizes that, you know, we all go through things. We all uh, have difficult days and we all make some pretty shitty decisions at times about things as well, which we beat ourselves up. Yeah. On, so, um, but mate, I, I could genuinely talk to you for ages. It's, it's great to catch up with you. Um, in fact, we're going to need to do more of this for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to get into your rituals, what you're doing every day, and stuff like that. I want to get. I want to get into mind. yours. What it sounds like. I'm, I'm, I feel. I feel inspired. I feel inspired talking to you. Let's let's do this more often. I'm 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 ready to go again. I'm ready to go. <laughs> let's do let's do a thing every morning for everyone to get up. We all get do the same routine. We all get cracking on our day. Hey mate, we should we should absolutely do a, a, a regular one. Maybe we maybe we'll have a chat about that off air. Yeah, it would help me too. So. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Mate, it's an absolute, absolute pleasure, um, you know, coming on. Thanks very much for, for joining me for this, uh, for this podcast. Uh, so where can everybody find um, House of Thrix and find you, Anthony? Thank you, mate. You're very kind. Um, so on Instagram and Facebook, we are House of Thrix, T-H-R-I-X, yep. right? which means hair in ancient Greek. And on YouTube, it's the same as House of Thrix and the series on it is called Hot Talks. We've just launched it. There's only a couple of videos on there. But I mean, like, we've got some great people. And the last guy that I've interviewed, he does hair for, he's Anthony Joshua's barber. He's done hair for LeBron James, Jay uh-huh. Cole, Tiny Temper. And this guy, he was on BBC yesterday. He, Facebook used him for their advertising campaign. I mean, we've got some really cool guests as well on that. So that's on YouTube. How's the thrift on Instagram? I'm Anthony Comedicus on Instagram as well. And yeah. yeah. We'll make sure there's links around the posts we put out, of course. And, uh, uh, and you'll share this across your social as well for us, won't you, of course? Thank you. Of course I will. I've enjoyed this. I'm enjoying your podcast. They're really cool. In fact, I, w- I was listening to one of yours earlier when I was training and it was really cool. Really, really good. Good information. Good. Thanks. Thanks, mate. Appreciate the, uh, the kind words. Thank you very much. Well, listen, I think we should do more of these. So, uh, so watch out for maybe uh, some, some stuff that we're Anthony and I are going to do, to do together. Uh, mate, look, have a great afternoon. Big love to the family and, uh, and I shall catch up with you very soon. Um, so if you want to go and check out Anthony, there will be links around this. Obviously, you've just told you where you can find, where you can find him. Uh, if you want to know more about Essex Business Radio, then go to www.essexbusinessradio.com where you're going to find all the links for our social and also you can download a free app with all the podcasts, new and old. Thanks again, Anthony. Catch up, uh, catch up with you very soon, all right? Thank so, you. Uh, Stay safe. So I'm going to sign off now. So it's ciao for now. Brown cow.